Hi, I'm Peter O'Keefe from Golfstrong. Welcome back to the Golfstrong YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about mobility and how it can help your game. So we're going to talk to you about swing falls that can normally happen or very common swing falls and the physical limitations or poor mobility that can cause these patterns. Further on, we're going to show you exercises that can help you improve on those movements and again, help you swing the club in a much better and healthier way. Flexibility versus mobility. So flexibility is the passive range of motion through a joint where mobility is doing the same thing under tension, essentially owning a position where you can apply force, very relevant to anything in the golf swing. So if we're talking about practice, I hear a lot of time people get sore or tired when they're practicing for too long. Mobile golfers tend to be stronger golfers. If you tackle this first, your body's gonna be much more able to hit more shots for a longer time, giving you better practice sessions, enabling you to become a better player. So what are the benefits of mobility for golfers? So obviously there's the strength element and the health of your body, but when you think about your golf swing, if you have a certain swing fault or a pattern you don't like that causes bad shots, you can look at that technically, you can look at it physically, or you can look at it both. So sometimes I, we like to work with players where we'd look at the physical first, make that player aware of what the, the physical limitations are and how that results in a poor golf swing. Oftentimes we see a lot of great results there by getting that person just to improve little things, especially around the hips, T-spine, shoulders, etc. You will see a benefit in the golf swing. The pro they're working with will see a really nice change there and all that working together will help the player become a better player. Someone who can't really make a big turn in their backswing is going to be limited. If you work on that person with more engagement or more rotation, they're going to make a longer backswing, the club's going to travel faster. It's as simple as that. Someone with tight hips who can't move their hips properly, most likely will be upper body dominant. Again, if you get their hips moving better, then their legs are involved and they're creating more power through the ground. So there's lots of different sequences that can be discovered and worked on, again, to improve your club head speed. As I spoke about earlier, three areas we always see limitations in people is hips, thoracic spine and shoulders. Come with me and we will show you some exercises to help those areas. Okay, so I suppose an area I always start on is, is the pelvis and spinal control. So like if I'm working with a kid or anyone at all, can you hug someone for me? And they'll either do that or they'll do a lovely, nice roundedness like that. And then can you control your pelvis both directions, you know, without any major movement? Some people, when you do that, they just go into a rock, so they have no control whatsoever. So if you give them a golf club and get them to rotate, 99% of the times they'll stand because that's what their body will want to do anyway. So again, if you get them rounding and straightening first, that's magic. And then getting them controlling their pelvis both directions, because again, a fluid pelvis is the link between what you do from the ground all the way up that chain to the golf club, to the golf ball, you know what I mean? So I suppose it, it comes in stages. If someone can't do this, which most times they can't, you'll see a lot of shaking, tight hip flexors, tighter, you know, weak lower backs, and how that transpires in into the golf shot. Again, if I'm working with juniors, I'll, I'll refer to this like the handbrake, someone pulling up the handbrake through the ball where they, they either stand up or they get lateral or they fall back. There's no fluidity here. There's no fluidity available there. And then that's all really cool stuff for sequence. So where does that start? It starts on the ground. So a lot of it is just in your quadruped or your all four position, where you're trying to get really good at those two movements all in one movement. So Normally people do that. Mistakes you'll see is people bending their arms, they just get a little bit disjointed. But when you get them moving nicely after a while, and then you get them up on their feet, sometimes there's then an awareness that they can move through their pelvis and through their spine. So if you get them doing that for a while, and obviously some people are working with their PGA pros or their coaches, so it's getting the feel that they don't stand up or they don't get lateral, that they have the fluid or they have the movement available where they can start rotating or at least see it and rep it after a while. But all the while it comes back to rechecking, rescreening, 
can they do those motor movements to prevent, again, the swing fall. So that's a great, a great example of the pelvis relating directly into a swing fall, either getting very lateral or early extending or just poor rotation through the ball. Okay, so normally the same people who find it hard to, you know, flex and extend, they'll be the same people who find it hard to, to rotate as well. So again, if I was working with juniors, if you can imagine someone with a catapult and they want to pull the catapult back, but they can't, but they want to create a lot of power, but they can't, they're pulling it back a certain amount and they get a certain output. It's the same in golf. So if you want to hit it a long distance, but you only have the ability to rotate that much or that much, you're just gonna impart the amount of power you have available to you. So again, when we're trying to assess people, we would do simple things like seeing how much they can rotate without their legs, how much they can rotate without their upper. So separation tests in both directions. So both directions. Again, you get a good idea then of how the body is gonna move. So a couple of different ways we would do that, back to the ground in a half kneeling position, just to flow into exercises and if we're focusing on, someone's, focusing on someone's backswing as a right-handed player, so this is a really nice one. You're just leaning on the band here. You're getting some rotation under a little bit of tension. A great way to do this is under a couple of reps or sets with the band, and then without the band, you'll feel like you've gained a lot of degrees there in terms of your rotation, just to give you a feel of what you can do. And then bring it up to standing, same type of thing. And this is great stuff to do with a driving range because it's so easy to have in your golf bag. You're getting in your golf posture, just imagining the amount of rotation you want. You can also do this with your normal grip. You're stepping on the band. You're just creating that tension. So this should feel like an exaggeration. It just has to. So when you're making those movements, you're putting your body into positions it's probably not used to. By all means, drop the band rep it again without the band, just nice free flowing movements. And then a nice way to do that is grab a club and just nice easy swings, much bigger movements. But again, just getting used to what it feels like to move more and you just go through that. So we can set up a nice set there for you that you build in around your practice with the overall goal of making the catapult go back that bit further to create more power going forward. Okay, and another point we look at here is, is the ability for someone to, to, to side bend or to tilt. So, you know, this is, the, this is another area that people get confused on and from time to time. So this would be a tilt, a forward tilt. Some people come out of forward tilt in their backswing, for instance. This is also a tilt, that is a left bend, and this is a right bend. Again, if I'm talking about a right-handed golfer. So, for instance, if I... If I see someone who struggles in a left bend as a right-handed player and I tilt them as well or turn them, if they can't do that, they're normally the people that stand up in their golf swing. So you'll hear this phrase about lifting your head. It's got nothing to do with your head. You either can't stay in your forward bend or you're struggling to stay in side bend. So it's a really nice way to practice. Very easy ways to do it. If you can't do it, we'll obviously assess it first. You just add a little bit of weight. You feel the stretch on the opposite side and come back up. You can also do it with a band or your body weight, simply getting the band overhead and just going into a nice tilted position. But again, to understand it, just to use the stick here. So if I get into a left bend as a right-handed golfer, so that is my left bend, and I get my left shoulder over my right foot, that is a nice position or a nice feel to be in for me to start a really nice sequence through the ball. Similarly, down the line here, if I go into right bend, and tilt left. Again, that's a lovely impact position for me there. What we spoke about previous is the opposite to that, which would be things like early extension, getting very lateral through the ball. So they're the easy wins for us. If we screen golfers of all levels and we see someone who is really tight in certain tilts or turns, you can work on that to change the characteristic of how that person swings the golf club. That's what we have for you this week. We'll be back with more videos on fields, problems people have and how we can fix them. If you wanna work with us or work with me personally, the information is below how to download the app, how to get in touch and all our information on our social media channels.